for our um, combination of, hold on, let me, okay, cool, we're going, uh, for a combination of New Year's and also this channel hitting 85,000 combo lords, which is super awesome. So thank you to anybody catching this at any point in time. And we are going to talk about some New Year's y calendar -y things. Do a little bit of a Q&A for anyone who has any questions out of the 85,000 of you combo lords who happen to be around. And uh, look at some of the water damage, possibly. Um, all around here, it's been raining like crazy. And so there was a whole little river going down the combo classroom, as you could see in my last stream. Looking around now, looks like it all pretty much evaporated and or drained downward. Now, downward does mean it goes into the neighbor's yards, but then theirs goes into the street and then those neighbor's yards, and that's just the direction it has to go. It has to go from the hills down to the water side. So on that path from the hills to the water side, sometimes it doesn't drain properly and just floods the yard. This year we got that and it might happen again later this week. So uh, I got what footage I could. We'll see that in the main channel episode and in a short I dropped um, about a little of the flooding and a past year where it was even crazier. Sometime I'll share this footage. I got out a boogie board, those like bodyboard things, and kind of surfed on the flooded yard, and that was fun. So, um, thank you to all of you who are joining me. What is up to all of you? And I hope you all had a nice New Year's. As we'll explore in a main channel episode pretty soon, our calendar isn't even necessarily the best way to do the calendar and is kind of arbitrary. There are other suggestions of possible calendars that I want to propose to you guys that I think are pretty cool and some suggestions of my own for how we could do a calendar. Um, so it's kind of arbitrary and random that it is January 1st. Wow, New Year. However, it's always a good excuse to, you know, find a good random reset point, maybe the start of a month or a year or a birthday, that gives you an excuse to, you know, ponder things, set some goals, or party, or some combo of those. I did have a party with friends here last night, and then we joined up with another party of my friends, and very fun. I love my friends, and maybe you'll see them more in this year. A um, bunch of my friends have helped me film a lot of the footage that you guys have seen, but um, not many of them have been on camera here much, but I will share more of my squad over time. They're super cool people, and I had a lot of fun with them last night, so I love them all, and I love you all too, so I hope that you had something fun last night, or just a chill time. A chill time is good as well. You don't have to go what everyone considers crazy. My night was pretty crazy, but even though I went crazy in a variety of uh, possible ways of thinking of the term, um, I didn't do one of the typical New Year's things, which is I didn't drink any alcohol last year. Because, uh, long story, but that was what was good for my personal quest, for the time being at least. Um, and so probably won't drink any alcohol this year either, and um, still managed to have a wild party time with my friends. Um, so that was fun, and now that it is New Year's Day and my yard is less flooded, I want to chat about some fun stories as well as some fun plans for what we might expect in the first couple months of 2023 here which is going to be the reason i say first few months is um our bigger shift in combo class isn't the new year hitting it's the grade resetting and we're not in grade negative two right now just because the new year magically hit grade negative two will hit when it's ready and that will probably be um when we have the base six amount of 100 the one that the number that looks like 100 in base six um the the number that looks like that 
and base 6 is 36. So probably when we have that many episodes on the main combo class channel, that will be the amount that's right for the grade based on my foresight of where we're at right now, although things could change. And that will probably be in a couple months. And so we got a few more months of our grade. But since it is a new calendar year and we are at peak chaos back here after the rain and a lot of destruction and experiments, um, for example, what you will see in one of the next main channel episodes. In fact, I think this is the main channel episode coming out tomorrow, is you will see the demise of one of the final states of this clock. Yeah, this is part of a clock, that number. Um, so uh, that clock has done a lot of good teaching and has met some of its final stages of its demise. But now it is still this frame and hand that will still be able to be remade and do a new clock. So if you have any thoughts about what you want this new clock to be, leave a comment. Although I already think it may be related to one of the ways of looking at musical notes which come in 12s. So, oh no, got water on my keyboard, um, which is my whole computer. Um, but musical notes come in 12s, kind of similar to clocks. So, um, do, 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 and thank you for all joining me here um so what else could we ponder about the new year that's been in my head is well i'll give a little more detail about when i'll reveal more of my calendar thoughts will be there'll be an episode on the main channel about calendars but i didn't plan it to drop on the new year i'm going to film it this next week i planned it to drop on Friday the 13th because today January 1st is a Sunday in fact maybe I'll even have to make a short telling the people about this who haven't seen on YouTube shorts yet um, that did you know that if and only if a month begins on a Sunday it will contain one of those days that some traditions consider superstitious or unlucky but I think is pretty cool called a Friday the 13th. So you'll have a Friday the 13th if and only if you have a the first day is a Sunday. Um, also, if the first day of your January, depending if that's the same weekday or not, and depending on if a year's a leap day or not, are the factors that decide whether you're going to have the same calendar that you could use an old year's calendar and it would work fine for the new ones. And the last time that happened matching 2023 is 2017. So if anyone has a 2017 calendar for some reason uh, that doesn't have any writing in it, I don't know why you'd have this, but if anyone has a 2017 calendar without any writing, email me at the contact link because I need that for a prop. I'm going to need to like buy one online. And when you try and find a 2017 calendar, the only ones they're still selling are like some vintage expensive one. It's like, this is the only so-and-so calendar left in existence from 2017. And I'm like, I don't need that. I just need a 2017 calendar because that'll be the same as a 2023 calendar. Began on the first day, same weekday and same leap day status. So, um, uh, feel free to leave any comments or thoughts of good questions, um, or just random New Year's Eve thoughts. Um, and I will go through those in a moment after one or two more thoughts about it, which that episode will contain most of my calendar -y thoughts and the calendar -y thoughts contain um, a type of calendar where every month has a Friday the 13th and that's why I did the um, the uh, I'm saving it for Friday the 13th and unfortunately this clock broke and I think like a something must have fallen on it 
because it shattered and rain got in it. It looks kind of cool. It's going to really decay faster now, but the water in it does look kind of cool. Look at that. So that's the combo class status of some of our clocks right now. We'll put that fella in the backdrop. And shout out to how long pumpkins last. This was from the Halloween special episode, so I bought this a few days before Halloween. And you could barely notice its age. It looks like almost new. So shout out to how long a uncut pumpkin can last. So um, we will do some math later in the episode too, by the way, for people who are into that. Um, I have a few more graphs to show that are rather neat. Some of the new graphs, as usual, that I found. I found a new twist on our Desmos graphs that has some new fun to it. Um, by the way, you may notice I'm not wearing my lab coat. And that is because it got really wet in the rain. And so I didn't want to wear it while it was soaked right now. I'm going to need to run it through the wash and dry today because it got soaked and muddy. And to those who think that when I wash and dry it, it will magically turn brand new white again it will not i have washed and dried it before the marker on it will probably still remain again but the mud and wetness will be removed um so um someone's saying they've kept old diaries and giving one to the current year that's equivalent to the old calendar and that is a, yep, a great strategy that I only thought of like a year ago, but I'm glad other people are employing it too. Um, so next time I get a calendar, I'm going to, you know, try and find a way to keep it for multiple years. Maybe if you want, you can write just on the top half of each box the first round and then like seven years later or whenever the cycle repeats right on the bottom half of each box and then you get to use a calendar twice um or just two different colors of ink um and someone's wondering how can i do my math without the safety equipment and it is a good question just watch i'm gonna get injured today because i don't have the lab coat so if it happens, don't say I didn't warn you. I just didn't want to get soaked today. Um, but it's true. That lab coat, all the damage on it would have been damage on my clothes, other clothes or body. So if you see a burn mark on the coat, well, that was a burn mark on the coat instead of on me. So... Um, we won't be wearing the lab coat for today's live video, unfortunately. We'll have to be careful about which type of numbers we divide. Um, and uh, in any case, other thoughts about what we will have coming up in the combo class uh, near future is... Um, well, on the main channel tomorrow, I'll put out the episode that... Because I've been trying to put them on there six days apart kind of like once a week but if we add our weeks count in six which might make more sense um and the i like it because on our week system it changes the day of the week every week and then you get it more than once a week so on the main channel there'll be a new one tomorrow i might not always have that there might be toward the end of the grade while i compile a really long finale episode there may be uh, more times there's a week or two between the episodes just during maybe like February or March while I'm compiling a super long finale. Till then, we'll still have a bunch of ones every six days or so. And the next one is going to be a really cool clock-like math formula that's again related to primes. I know my last episode is about this thing called prime signatures, but um, this is a different prime-related thing that is a cool formula that uh, I bet like a tenth of you or a fifth of you do know this formula already if you've like studied any number theory. But um, even if you do, 
I think you'll like my novel presentation of it. And if you don't, you'll be surprised by the formula. And I've, it's a formula that uses modular arithmetic. So of course I can demonstrate it with clocks. So there's a, it's a clock heavy episode. Um, in fact, I'll probably put my alternate episode intro that says clock quest and combo class grade negative one where I burn a different clock. Um, and that one is a clock heavy one also has to do with primes and factorials come up in it and other fun stuff and it was raining but we dodged it in that one then there's an episode that uh, after it just rained a little bit I was messing around with all these bubble experiments because the bubbles were sticking on the uh, wet surfaces really well so there's a kind of sillier science episode about rain and bubbles that does have some facts and some science fun um, that comes out after that on the main channel that I already filmed so far what was going to be all of it. But then after it's been flooding here, I'm going to have to see if there's going to be like another second half of the episode if it floods here again. So we'll see what that episode turns into. Um, and then after that will be an episode that will drop on Friday the 13th that will be about calendars. And then after that, we're going to be at about 30 or so episodes on the main channel. And that's going to mean that we only have about six or so more episodes in grade negative one. And in the meantime, of course, there's going to be a lot of shorts and other rarities on this channel, too. I'll also be very soon, probably this week, announcing a more specific stream schedule so that you folks will know a few days out of the week that you know for sure I'll be streaming at what time. And um, there will also be random streams because I do like to just work on doing stuff like streams uh, whenever I have free time, which can be kind of random now because I still have like a day job that's kind of random. Um, but I... Um, I'm going to pick at least a few days of the week that I set a particular time, and then you'll know to look forward to a particular combo class stream on different days. I will try and hit them on a few time zones. So, you know, one might be like a little earlier than today's stream, and then one might be like later in the day, and then it'll hit more different time zones. Um, so, a lot of fun stuff coming out on the main channel and on that schedule for streaming very soon. Also, um, to all the folks who haven't yet, one month ago at the beginning of December, I started a Patreon page for Combo Class, so please check that out if you haven't. There will be a lot more cool bonus content that there already is that I put last month. A lot more cool bonus content, even more so, coming this month. So... Uh, to anyone who is following on there, you can look forward to a lot more behind the scenes -y rarities. Um, and let's see what else is in the near future. In Grade Negative 2, which is a little bit off, but in not too long, a lot of people have asked what will be different. Um, it do the new grade doesn't necessarily mean harder or easier. There will be some episodes and topics that are follow-ups to old ones, but that's kind of arguable whether you'd say that's easier or harder. Sometimes, like, the first step is the harder jump. Sometimes, like, the later steps are the harder jump. Um, and then other ones will just be fresh topics and will be pretty similar complexity. I mean, it ranges in complexity here, but pretty similar range in grade negative two. If anything, I just want to, for one, up the production quality a little without losing our, you know, lo-fi real life aspect to it. We'll keep it having the real life and mildly punk chaotic edge for sure, but up the production quality a little bit. Um, and then I want to go a little further with certain uh, artistic ways. I want to kind of make the main episodes incorporating a little more almost surrealism, some different types of scenes I want to work in, and some different, uh, more often having a bunch of different cut scenes and different visual demonstrations for stuff, and hopefully having more ability to work with, like, cool, random 
plants or science experiments or animals or stuff like that that um, I might have to like find a collaboration or like hire something or travel somewhere um, but cool stuff that I can't just do in this corner for little field trips and stuff um, or like equipment I can buy to do cool science experiments back here um, so hopefully just like bigger scale experiments and slightly higher production quality will be the only main difference in the next grade some future grades may have surreal twists they may go different directions uh, you, you, this will be a wild journey but grade negative two at least at the beginning uh, the main difference you'll notice will be a reset of sorts things move in cycles and it'll sort of be like hitting back on now of course pretend is a zero on top because clocks should be more like modular arithmetic and have it go zero up through the number one less than the total amount uh, but you know say that if this is our grade right now and we're spinning around and this is a zero reset up on top well we've spun around a bit and this was maybe around the time my desk broke and then this was around the time that um you know my hair's starting to get kind of long and crazy and the lab coat's getting wild and now we're about here in the grade we're somewhere in the tens um somewhere in the last sixth of the grade probably or maybe it could be in the late nines or in the tens of the grade and then when we hit there um I'll probably have a new haircut and a new desk and a new few things. We're going to figure out how it's going to be most effective to begin the teaching. But uh, there will be a few resets. And for those who like the chaos, you know, you'll only have to wait so many episodes before the desk breaks again and the lab coat gets destroyed again. So some things work in cyclical cycles and clocks are not the only one. Um, and we're not really going to have much of what some schools do of a summer break or anything because I don't want to leave you waiting for too long. I don't want to leave you without content. So if anything, there will only be a week or two off between the grades. Um, so, and yep, to people wondering about my email, um, I've been super busy and I've gotten a lot of emails, but I will get back to people over time. I will make sure to check through that more over time because I do like when people reach out for sure. Um, but sometimes it will take me a while to reply or you might have to uh, try me a few times just because I have gotten get, getting to the point where I'm getting a lot. Um, and is all the water dried up? It is. Now, to anyone who doesn't know the water situation, how it was a little bit ago, um, why don't we watch a little bit of footage? So, let's see. Here's some, the more like behind the scenes of when it was flooding. Um, so, one sec. Um, I'm going to get you guys on my screen for a second and then we can look at a clip or two. Um, now what we're going to look at is just the ones that are filmed vertical. I also have clips that are, were filmed horizontal, but those are going to possibly be in that episode about bubbles and rain on the main channel. So we will um, just be looking at some behind the scenes from the short I posted. Um, all right. And let me pull one or two up. I had to try and film a bunch of them because it was flooding and raining and I was slipping and sliding and stuff. So it was really hard to try and um, make it all work. So... Um, let me try and get you guys on my screen. Um, do, 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 do. In the meantime, feel free to um, leave any thoughts or comments that you want. 
that you would like to see me discuss or answer throughout today's stream. And now let me get you onto my screen. Whoa, we always get this multi-layered effect when I switch over with the current mode where I'm running all my own switching. We always see a bunch of iterations of me. And yes, this is Desmos in the background because we may need to look at some cool new graphs I found in a little bit. Um, for now, what I want to look at is... Um, I have it muted just because you can watch my short if you want to see my commentary about it. But I had to try and get a few takes because it kept like raining on my phone and messing everything up. But um, here is the flooded part of the front yard. If you recognize my front yard, it, that's normally like a path, like dirt. And this was like in some parts a foot of water. Um, like a pretty big area of it was a foot deep. So not great. Um, <laughs> kind of crazy. Um, we also had in the back by the classroom right here, here I am way in the back and you see like there's a little lake and then here's like a river that the lake was carrying down and here we're getting to the combo classroom part back here. And there was like this whole like puddle down here like or more like a river um river slash lake so it was flooding back here and then it got even worse but then uh it dried up a little bit since then and i'm gonna go back to me for a second now because part of why i showed that was that i wanted to um now show you the dry status of it However, for any fans of giant puddles, don't worry because it's forecast not to rain today, but to rain a lot more this week. And so I would not be shocked if the puddles return. So we'll see. I, I'm scheduled to film on Tuesday and Thursday at least, if not other days too, maybe. So... We'll see uh, what chaos we get with the further levels. However, for now, um, it is dried back to fully dry there. However, if you look around here, so you see this mud in here? Here there's like mud with leaves at least, but where it's pure mud here, this is like a slippery death trap. This mud right here is just like waiting to break someone's ankle. So, um, you gotta be careful. Um, the mud is very <laughs> slippery. There's a bit of me slipping in the mud that'll be in the next main channel episode that comes out tomorrow. Um, so, Luckily it is dried up now. That's why I'm streaming outdoors. We've been doing some room streams this season because it's uh, been all rainy, but um, uh, I prefer the outdoor streams when possible, when it's not too rainy or too dark. Um, and sometimes we get over the dark with a little campfire, but um, when it's raining, a uh, little harder to get over. In a future grade, that's another thing I want to upgrade that I'm not going to have the resources to upgrade right in grade negative two, but maybe in grade negative three or something, is I would like to have a secondary set that's indoors, like a big warehouse somewhere or something inside. So I could, um, when it's raining or loud or something crazy out here, I have a backup place to film. Um, so there will also, like I said, be more field trips. So we may be filming out by like cool rivers and nature and stuff. I love me a good forest and a good river. So maybe we'll bring some whiteboards out to the woods sometimes to do our lessons. Um, I don't know how my service is going to work out there, but at least I like film episodes. Um, we'll also try streaming down at the marina and the train track sometime. Um, and just like try and see if we can go out to nature together. If I have good enough cell service to stream out there. Um, it might be a really bad quality stream. We'll have to see. Um, 
let me pull up the chat on my phone because in a minute I'm going to switch over back to my screen. And so I don't want the chat up on here anymore. Otherwise it'll be very distracting. Um, so let me pull up in the chat on my phone. Uh, like I said, uh, feel free to ask any thoughts or questions or anything fun that you did for New Year's or any ideas you have for what you think people should keep in mind for their next New Year. And I think that, you know, um, one thing I often recommend, this isn't specifically for this year, but, you know, many of my recommendations include filling your life with some numbers, some nature, some laughter, um, and some other recommendations that we'll go into more details in a little bit maybe, but let me pull up in this chat. Um, all right, so someone's calling that one the OBS Fractal. That is a good name for it. Um, so that should maybe even have a like name and culture. Like once live streaming has gotten this popular, maybe we need a term for that like type of glitch. Um, so now someone says they said they're from India and asked, do I like India? Uh, sure. I've never been to India, but, uh, I would like to visit someday. Um, India has a lot of cool culture. So, you know, I've never been myself, but I would say I like it. Um, someone's asking, um, if I have ever read Gerdel Escher Bach and I have not read that. I've read a few passages from it, and I've had some friends recommend it, so I'll grab a copy of that sometime for sure. Uh, that'll be one on my to-buy when I come across a cheap copy list. Um, I have a huge stack of just pure math books that I'm going through that are just like number theory topics and stuff, but um, once I've gone a little further through those, I'll buy another batch of used books, and that is one of the ones that I've been meaning to read at some point. Seems cool from some passages I've read. Um, someone's wondering if I'll explain how to do the weird bases 7 thirds or 19 eighths in my base 2i video. Now, at least for ones where the fractions are like co-prime, I haven't really checked if it works different if you were like saying like base 19 eighths, meaning different than base 2. Or no, wait, 19 eighths would simplify. No, that wouldn't simplify. 7 thirds, yeah, and I was thinking 18 ninths. Um, so yeah, those bases at least. Um, you can deduce how to do those by, I kind of tried to leave this as a puzzle to the viewer in the episode where I said, when I explained how to do base three halves, or it might've been four thirds. I forget if I did base three halves. I think it was three halves I did. Um, I asked like, how would you do something else like base four thirds? Um, and the way you do that would be, right, you could play a similar game to my boxes and, uh, items in boxes analogy, and you could, um, with that, um, idea that I, uh, used in the episode, um, you could substitute how many items you move and how many you keep out of those in a similar way that I moved three and kept two when I wanted base three halves. Um, so someone said, where am I from? I'm from California of the United States. Um, I guess California kind of has a lot of accents in it. So I have a mix of a few maybe cause I've had, friends from a lot of different types of subculture or main culture. Um, but I am from the Bay area of California. Um, so someone is asking if I am inviting people to my place. I'm not sure where they got that assumption. 
no people can always uh message me if they are if they want to ask about helping out in the combo classroom and maybe i'll have a fun job for you and you could visit and help with something that's not out of question but it's certainly not an open invitation um you would have to message me and see if i for some reason have an extra fun task to give you and it makes sense um someone asked what is um my opinion on drug use in the science world um i have nothing inherently against it to anyone who uses a drug you have to be very careful a lot of precautions to take with any different substance different precautions for different ones so i'm not going to advocate it and say i'm like pro it or anything because it's something to be incredibly cautious of but i am more lenient on certain um traits like that than some teachers would be and i think that once in a while if it's you know not what you do every day on the job then maybe you could you know use it to complement some weird experiment um However, you know, don't treat that like a recommendation or anything. Someone's wondering where some random things are. Um, not sure what that was in reference to. And someone's wondering, again, they asked about some weird bases. And that's a similar thing to what I did with those boxes. Like I was saying, you could do for any fraction. You just have to switch how many or at least any fraction where they're co-prime to each other. The fractions you're giving, for example, you could do with um, like the box, the amount you put in a box is your starting amount of a thing you want to check how to write the number. And then you take piles of the numerator at, at a time and only keep the denominator in a similar way to what I did with three halves. Um, someone asked what I did with my dictionary of numbers and well I have two dictionaries of numbers now I'm not sure if you mean the one that's out here if you saw that in the shot or the newer one I got the one that's out here unfortunately I had left out in the rain once so it's somewhat sacrificed it's it's gonna grow mold it's all got soaked and I think already has some mold and might be unsalvageable so my old number dictionary, which I really liked, is sacrificed, and I'm going to have to probably rebuy one because I really liked it. But the good news is I think they've made a newer edition of it, so maybe they've added some, some new cool numbers in the mix. Um, maybe it invented another number it didn't have before. No, I mean, like, added a trait about a number they didn't have. But um, I, I do have a new number dictionary. To those who have seen the short about it or a live stream about it, well, my new number dictionary is only numbers. It doesn't have any definitions. It's like, what the hell? So I am adamant about getting my money out of that purchase. So I'm going to make an entire episode about weird modular patterns that I can find in the book, even though the book is only numbers. But they have columns, they're all sorted in uh, columns of eight per page, so I can, there's patterns in mod eight to expose, but it's literally just numbers. Um, so I need to rebuy a copy of an actual number dictionary that has definitions. For now, if anyone wants a number dictionary, remember that Wikipedia, usually if you Google any number less than like at least any one or two digit number and a lot of three digit numbers too um, you can find traits about them um, for example a game we could play now is um, later today or another time soon look at what wikipedia has to say for the number range we're about to hit there we're going to be high enough in the numbers of how many subscribers i have here that that number won't be a thing that's a um a single article but it'll be a list of some cool art numbers in that range so we can see what cool amounts of combo lords we're going to pass soon 
which would be probably their article about selected numbers in the range 80,000 to 89,999. Um, I'll pull that up in the background just in case we want to do that later as a game. Selected numbers in the range 80,000 to 80,999 because we are kind of today doing an 85,000 subscriber celebration. Super awesome. I didn't mention it in the title, but um, it's been exactly from today, four months ago, I posted the first video on this channel. Um, and on the main channel was about eight months ago, approximately, I posted the first video. And exactly four months ago, today, I posted the first video on this channel. So absolutely spectacular that we have gotten this many people here in four months. I love you all. as so cool. Um, so... Someone's wondering, will there be class today? And there is a casual class. If you mean a class as far as a math lesson, you're going to have to wait till tomorrow for that, possibly. Um, I may drop a short later to actually probably if I do a short later today, it'll have to be telling the other folks um, a trade I said earlier today about calendars. But um, there will be a full episode on the main channel. That's another 17 minutes about new stuff about prime numbers and modular arithmetic that will be coming out tomorrow. So check out the main combo class channel sometime tomorrow and you will get to see a more formal class. For now we're doing a casual New Year's class where we just hang out, chat, and look at some shapes on Desmos and look at a list of selected numbers in the range 80,000 to 89,999. Um, so, um, let's see, someone's saying they saw some other cool traditions such as Ukrainian New Year's traditions, and a cool thing is gifting things you already own but that you think someone else would value more. I think that is a good tradition. Uh, gift giving is too corporate these days. You get everyone buying plastic just for the hell of it. A lot of times you buy plastic for someone that you know they would like rather you save the money than give them the gift, but it's a nice gesture. So if you can find a way to do the nice gesture without the plastic and waste of money, then even better. So homemade gifts are great. Regifting stuff, if it's intentional and acknowledged or subtle enough that it's not hurting anyone, it can be a powerful technique as well. So, you know, sometimes it's good to make a, like acknowledgement with your friends or family some years where you're like, let's just not care that much about gifts this year. And they're like, kind of nicer to give people things on surprising times, just when you have something extra to share or when you're feeling loving or when you think that they need something cool. Um, so I think it's like shows a lot more honestly to give someone a gift on a non-holiday than on a holiday. But with that said, it's still nice sometimes, like with your close family, to give something. So, kind of hard to figure it out. If you can find a way to do a homemade one, extra good. I like the regifting idea too. Um, now, um, you know what I think in combo class too? Something I want to remind people of about having too much stuff around. A new policy that I want more people in the world to try is my. A uh, policy where, not really a policy, but a meditational technique where if there's something that you think is important to you, but you have too many things taking up space, find a cool way to turn it into a piece of art while destroying it. And for me, since I make videos, that's a little easier because I can just like document it on film and destroy it. But even if you don't treat it as art and you just treat it as documenting it, if you film something while destroying it in a crazy way, well, it lives on forever and will probably get acknowledged even more than the item would be get acknowledged sitting on the shelf. So sometimes I speed run the destruction of some things, but they end up getting more like attention than the long duration of the lifespan they would get otherwise. So I'm sort of doing them a favor. So um, the um, uh, document destroy policy, or not policy, but technique is a good combo class technique. You guys could try, and another combo class technique is the uh, destroy and recreate combo class technique where you 
destroy something and you use one of the parts to create a newer, better version of it. So, um, someone said something about bees classified as fish, and I did see that episode listed, although I haven't watched it yet, by the channel Food Theory that another comment mentioned down here. And um, I do like that channel. I haven't had the chance to see that episode, but that's a cool channel. I like that guy, Matt Pat, but I don't play that many video games. So honestly, the game theorist is like the one of his channels I'm least interested in. So I'm more interested in the food theory. Um, so someone said I should do a field trip to the Lawrence Livermore Laboratory, and I would love to get a connection there where I could actually do a cool like inside visit. I will work on that in grade negative two when I said taking cool field trips. It also will involve trying to make cool connections inside places like that that will let me come after hours or whatever it takes to like come for 20 minutes indoors there and film. That's kind of asking them a lot. They don't, they're not like there to be on film. They're there to do science. So um, it will be cool if we could take a field trip inside. Worst case scenario, we could take a field trip just to take a peek at where it is up in the hills. Um, but I also want to try and make a connection at this thing affiliated with them, which is not the, the laboratory would be really cool if I can make a good enough connection to like see a scientific reaction in place, like them doing something cool. Um, but what I want in the meantime is a connection at the Lawrence hall of science. It was this place I used to go as a kid, a bunch where it's like a science museum type center where you have all these interactive demonstrations of science. And although it's designed as for kids, I think it would be cool for any age to see the experiments in because it's just like tactile science experiments. Who says that's only for kids? So um, the Lawrence Hall of Science is really epic. Um, I want to go there too. Um, but yeah, I have been... Uh, like up around the actual laboratories a ton hiking because it's really close to where cool hiking trails are in my area someone said they googled the number 2023 but it was too uninteresting for wikipedia um but so you could look at it in the selected numbers range so let's look that up um selected numbers in the 2000 range will come up if we look at the wikipedia article for 2000 but not for the year, for the one about the number. So uh, check it out, folks. There is on the Wikipedia article here. Let me let me give you guys access to my screen. So here we have um, so. 2000 they have a few traits about it because it's you know a number that gets a lot of popularity although it's a little overrated but down here we have selected numbers and they do have one trait of this which is very base 10 oriented trait and not super unique it's that it's a multiple of seven with a digit sum equal to seven that sounds not that rare not even sure why they listed that, but okay. Um, here's the one I was looking for, though. 2024 is a tetrahedral number. Those are the level beyond triangular numbers, which could be seen as three ways you could see them, at least. One is a row of Pascal's triangle going down. Another is, it is, if you took all of the natural numbers and added them one at a time, like added them as totaling the sums up to a given point, you would generate the triangular numbers. And if you did it to that again, you would generate the tetrahedral numbers. And another way is that kind of like triangular numbers are dots on a, uh, like flat surface can represent them. Balls in a tetrahedron can represent tetrahedral numbers. So in 2024, hopefully by then I'll have the resources to pull this off. I'll get 2,024 marbles, and they'll stack in a tetrahedron. So we'll be able to make, there's a tetrahedral dice to show. Um, we'll be able to 
Um, we'll be able to make this shape, tetrahedron, out of marbles um, in 2024 to match the year. And the tetrahedral numbers are kind of sparse at that point. I mean, they're not like scarce on the number line, but they're um, kind of spread out at that point. So let's see. The last tetrahedral number year was 1771. The next one after 2024 will be 2300. Um, so 2024, pretty big one. Also, um, I'll mention this in an episode before long, but we have a bunch of primes in a row. The closest you can get four primes uh, in a row is occurring in the 2080s. I mean, the closest you can get them at that point in the number line, not counting like two, three, five and stuff. Um, that the closest you can get them at that point in the number line is ones ending in the digit one, then three, then seven, then nine. And so that is happening for the first time in a rare while in 2081 to 2089. Um, so now that was that. For 2023, there wasn't much going on, not much popping for the year number. It's kind of a lame trait, but okay, we'll go with that. Multiple of seven with digit sum equal to seven. So, um, there's um, the other one I pulled up was related to we are celebrating that we got 85,000 combo lords here. And so I got the article about the 80,000 numbers. We got 85,000 didn't even make it because not that notable of a number. But right now, let's see if we've passed this. The product of five consecutive primes. Are we there yet? Let's see. And we are just past it. We have just passed the number that is the product of five consecutive primes. Very soon we will be passing 43 cubed. Now this is a good one. We're going to have to put this in like some type of episode or live stream. We're pretty close to the number of seconds in a day. So that's a pretty big one around the combo class. You know all our clocks? Well... We're going to have to do something big when we pass the number of seconds in a day. Um, now, when we get to this one, we will um, discuss unitary perfect numbers, which are actually different than perfect numbers. I've made a lot of episodes about perfect numbers, but unitary perfect numbers are actually different. They relate to what's called unitary divisors, which are different than normal proper divisors. So... Um, we will discuss unitary perfect numbers when we are close to that. Um, they're actually rare, unitary perfect numbers that we know. Of. So, real quick, you know, uh, this will contain some spoilers if you read it, but really what I just want to show is known examples. Look, we only know five. So, the last unitary perfect number of followers we had was 90. Next, we're going to hit this. And then after that, I don't think we're ever going to hit that amount. That would be uh, pretty astonishing. Unless maybe we already have that many subscribers, including all the aliens watching this in the future on a telescope. Now, unfortunately, folks, the um, battery's low here. And we... Um, don't have the charger out here. I need to run and get it. So while I run and get the charger, we're going to put on a little graph right here. We can watch a bug flapping while I do it. So R equals sine of tan of the angle theta. And we're going to range from what will make part of the flap. Well, we need to put an A somewhere. There we go. There's a flap. 
Now we don't need it to go all the way if we want a whole flap. So we want it to go like from like A is like, um, we want A to range from like one to two and a half. All right. There's our bug flapping. So I'll also make our screen a little bigger, the view of here, because maybe a squirrel or a cat will run by or something. So um, there, hopefully I'm not blocking the entire bug. I'll shrink a tiny bit. And now I'm going to run and get the charger. So Keep an eye on this bug, and if there's any cool critters that pop in the background, leave a comment if I miss a critter. the combo class combo class 2 the charger has come because the computer is way too far for the charger card to reach.
thank you for whoever stuck around of our combo lords. You guys are awesome. Someone says they saw a fly. And maybe they were referring to the big bug in the middle of the screen. Uh, you guys are very astute viewers who observed that there was a critter right there who I forgot was a critter. So you got me there. There was a critter I should have acknowledged. Um, so. Oh, these chairs sink in the mud like crazy. You guys got to wait to see a clip of that. I sat down in one that sank in the mud so deep because like they'll sink in the mud slowly over time, these chairs. And then they have really the ones with spiky tips when it's muddy. And then if they sink really deep over time, then I'll yank them out. And if I'm not careful, then there's these holes they've plunged that when you sit back in the chair, it goes like zoop back into the holes it had dug before. And so uh, there was a good clip of that we got luckily. So that'll be in the uh, rainy bubble episode. Um, someone says it looks beautiful and it is really nice out. The rain cleared up. It's really sunny today. It's gonna be raining a lot of the week, but today is glowing out here and the birds are chirping. I love the neighborhood birds. Um, there's a nest up there that was pretty new. We can take a peek at that. So look at this potential nest up there. Do, 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 do. See that nest? It's all, I'm sideways with the camera to make it fit, but, um, so maybe that's some of the birds. There's also a lot of other birds. Um, our neighbors have crows, not that they own but that they um, call over from these trees from their yard. The crows stay in these redwood trees in my neighbor's yard some years. Like have their, they hang out there a lot, but some years they have their babies there and they'll come and bring the babies to meet the neighbors because the neighbors like do these calls to them and put out peanuts and the crows like the peanuts and they're super smart. And so the neighbors have befriended the crows and I've befriended the neighbors, so. Now I have an in with the crows. Um, so let's see what else we got going on here. It is rather beautiful, but bright from this angle. So we're gonna lose a little of the background beauty when we get that glare. Uh, we're also on just my computer's webcam. So these are lower quality. I'll start using another webcam again. I like broke the old one I had during some stream, but I'll get a new one soon and then upgrade the quality of the streams at some point before long as well as upgrading the quality of the um, audio on the episodes and probably on the streams too um so yeah very nice out here today um someone's wondering when they pick up garbage well they're I don't know what stuff I'm gonna throw away from here. I'm gonna have to see. Um, some of this stuff is my props and is salvageable and my teaching supplies. But some of this stuff I should remove with trash. And um, I'm not sure if you meant if you heard it on a neighborhood block or if you were wondering because this looks like trash. But in any case, um, it's on a random day of the week. Um, so, Yes, it is very nice out here today. I'm gonna to go back to the graphs in a moment because I wanna show a cool variation that I found. This won't be our main portion of the stream. We'll probably be hanging out in nature for a good amount of the time. Um, and I'm not sure, it's just a casual stream. I didn't get that much sleep. Came back from about 4 a.m. with my friends, so because uh, we started our party here, then went to a friend's house, and I came back very late, so uh, not running on a crazy amount of sleep, but we'll have a nice casual stream, including some graphs. So this was using polar coordinates, but we're not going to mostly be using those today. We are going to be looking at variations of the crazy sign and trig functions that we found. Now, an example of a really cool one we found is that if you say that uh, x squared plus y, oop, nope, x squared plus y squared equals one, you get a circle. 
In fact, if we say a squared, then we get a circle with radius a. Um, am I small enough? I'll go a little smaller. Now, what if we had put sine around each of these and we're taking the sine of the x-coordinate squared plus the sine of the y-coordinate squared is a squared. Now we get a crazy zero. Well, it's not even handling it. Plus there's a smaller range where the a works. It doesn't work on all of it. But look at this. Pretty wild, huh? So that's one we've already checked out. That's pretty cool. Now I was thinking and fiddling around on my own, seeing what are ways we can throw a little twist into this. What are some other fun additions we can change to find new variations of fun graphs? And well, let's start with one I was changing in general and we had the circle equation, x squared plus y squared equals a squared, I was like, oh, a squared, we're like, um, oops, then I was first thinking, what are some ways that I can change this a squared side? And I was like, what if I don't have a slider and I put this in terms of x and y? Like if I did something like x times y or x over y or something like that. And then I was first fiddling with like, okay, now we're gonna put the signs back on there. Sign there, we're already getting a pretty trippy looking one. And then we're gonna throw a sign on there too. And we get a quite trippy one. And then it gets even cooler if we turn this into an inequality. Now it's the points on the graph where the sine coordinate of x, the x coordinate squared, wait, no, the sine of the x coordinate squared plus the sine of the y coordinate squared is less than or equal to the x coordinate divided by the y coordinate. These green points are the points of the graph where that's true. Pretty crazy, huh? Look at that. Now what happens if we put a constant in the mix somewhere? Well, we can make it kind of straighten out and lose some of its weirdness. And we get the weirdness coming. I don't think it lost the weirdness, it just made it further maybe. What happens at the middle? What happens at zero? We get the sign thing, because this is the same thing as sine of x squared plus sine of y squared is less than or equal to zero. But when we're there, that's cool. When it's barely off from zero, we get this weird one. And I think negative one is very similar to what one was. So what if we put the a somewhere else? Um, first of all, what if it's down? Well, no, down there will be the same as when it was a fractional value up there. So what about there? Well, this just stretches it going way via upward way. What if we put it on both of them? Is this just going to scale it up? Yeah, scales it up and down kind of. So now one more experiment. Putting it on just one of these. Ooh, that gets to a weirder new state. The state's kind of cool. Weird spikes, stalactite, stalagmite like things. And yeah, look, they get more and more broken up. They're like becoming more and more separated as you go down. It's like they're documenting an upside down, ver or this will be a upright version up here. Um, oh no, it's just filled in. Oop. This is like, it's drawing um, a document, 
interpretation of like slow mo water driplets forming off of a spout or something. Like a slow mo droplet falling or something. Although, as far as what raindrops look like, wait and see my episode about rain for that. Coming out on the main channel pretty soon. Although, the episode tomorrow is just very mathy. Um, so, there's that. Now, what happens now? We had this crazy thing, right? Now, A is not doing anything. There's no A in there anymore. What if I put this one in a sign too? Look at this. Now we get not only this crazy wavy pattern back and forth with these different glitches, but we get these spiky, like they look like the flower on my passion fruit guava, where it has like these round leaves and then these little like spiky but not sharp things and this little like almost dusty looking little like pollen like stuff these look like different flowers and stuff and there's this one like flowery thing in the middle and then you get this weird highway of glitchiness and then you get these rows of different dots going up in different ways and you got like different streams of them coming in at different angles you got like this like weird white wave coming down there, this green wave coming up there. So that is already pretty wild. First, let's see what happens if we put some sort of constant in there, just so we can mutate it a bit. Now we get these moving rays. You see how there's this like extra white ray there that flies on these two sides. And then there's a green ray to match that flies on these two sides. And the ray like dances and moves and slides. It's like a beam of light reflecting on different angles. All right. So that was if A was there. What if A is outside? <laughs> Wild. So there's that. Now, what if we change any of these without worrying about an A? just so we have a slightly simpler equation. And we try and change some of these from sines to tangents and stuff. First, what we have to try is the good old times on this side turns into minus or plus. There's minus, looks like a flip of it in a way, but with some differences, there's times. So times is trippy. Let's put an A back in there too. This really has those reflecting rays. You see this white ray over here that like flies on that side and then this green ray that matches over there. And then there's like smaller beams of rays reflecting in and in and in and in. Then what if we, instead of the A out there, we put the A in there. Yeah, see this moves where the rays are sort of, it spreads them out. Wow. So that's if we multiplied. What if we divide? Ooh, look at that. These weird hourglass like things going up and down. Wow. This one's trippy. Look at these crazy landscapes. This is when A is negative two. I was having trouble decoding the upper bits. 
But yeah, they look like these weird on and off things. These weird snakes coming over. Um, so, that's divided by. Now we're going to go back to plus, but we're going to change some of them. Tangent. Whoa. We've straightened things out in a way. Tangent there. Whoa. Tangent on all of them. Uh-oh. Whoa. All right. Go back to not on all of them. We're going to try some other variations. Well, well, we didn't try times on all those, so now we'll replace the times with them. Whoa. And two. And three. Whoa, and then we'll change these ones back first. Whoa. Whoa. This one really has those beams of light flying down. And then these beams of light have a straight line on one edge. And they have these weird rippled patterns. So, and A is not doing anything right now. Then, did we try that with a plus where these were sine and that was tan? Yeah, whoa. So, now with them being times, or now let's try divided by but with some of them being tan. Whoa. Whoa. And then we're going to try more of them being tan. Whoa. Whoa. And then what if this goes back? Whoa. So. These are some of the wildest patterns. Look at this one. We get this squarish box right here that this one fits in. Well, there's not actually a box, but from the like places the inequality holds, it looks like it draws a box. And then we get these like little plants and little display cases lined up over here. Or you can see it as a green plant or as like this white alternate other one. And this is flips of that and and we got all these little hills and these little display cases, like little charts. These look like we graphed a bunch of weird little things, a bunch of graphs lined up. So there we go, pretty wild. Now, like imagine if you were in this landscape and you're down here, and you're like, no, 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 what's going on? Oh, they're getting bigger. Where are we going? No, 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 no. Whoa. So, any other suggestions for variations on this you would like to see? I know I still have to go back on some of the old stream comments at some point and look at some more of the past suggestions that have been made, but, um, Oh, look at these weird uneven hexagons. Look at all these hexagons in the white space there. Oh, they get bendy up there, but they look more hexagonal down here. Um, so, um, yeah, leave thoughts if you want any variations on these, although I do still have to, on a future stream, go back into the um, chat comments on old suggestions. So... I'm going to check back on our comments now. Um, people saying it's above their educational experience and stuff. Well, I think it's good to look at things and trust that things are true, even if you don't fully understand them. That can include reading about things or watching videos about things. Sometimes I would watch videos from some channels before I fully understood the concepts and then come back to the video later. To let them sink in and um, also I think that um, with this calculator you can definitely trust it so because it's showing 
I mean, it says that it's not resolved in full detail, those spiky bits and stuff, but if we ever zoom in on a stretch and it doesn't say that, then we can be a bit more confident that it looks like what the graph looks like there, kind of. We can see it does look like that out here. Um, just these bits are hard for it to describe because they get infinity. Um, so uh, you could just trust that the calculator is doing something and it's pretty beautiful even if you don't fully understand. Um, so let's see. Um, someone's wondering about Googleology, which is a name for the study of very large numbers. And yeah, I have seen that Wikipedia. Maybe we'll do a stream where we visit that at some point. That could be fun um, because, yeah, at some point it could be fun to look at what they say about some very large numbers. And by large, I do not mean like one billion. I mean like actually large. So, um, I mean, well, what is actually large is kind of the point of it. Um, until you get to like transfinite numbers and stuff. Uh, all types of large could be considered small compared to another one, but um, still, Googleology studies ones that are bigger than we're used to. Someone's wondering about if you could reverse a moving average. Um, and so, for example, you get the average of the last seven days every hour. I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that. But yeah, in some cases, you can reverse a moving average. Um, I mean, sometimes when you reverse things like that, you don't have a singular answer it could be, but you do have data about the answer. So often you can't reverse everything to get the full story because there's multiple things that could have led to that. But sometimes you can get part of the story. Not sure exactly what the example means, though. Um, Someone's asking if this is coding, and no, I don't consider myself to know any coding. This is me knowing a little bit about which equations might be interesting and just messing around with a graphing calculator based on educated guesses from my math knowledge. Um, but I don't consider myself able to know how to code. Um, so, um, Lots of very good comments. I love you all. Can't answer every single person, but thank you all for the comments. You're awesome. Um, oh, some of those I was answering were just old comments I didn't get to, I guess. Um, but now I'm getting to the slightly newer ones. Um, someone said, mentioned GeoGebra, which I also may try at some point. That is a other type of possible graphing calculator that might be extra cool. Um, and yeah, I got the spam bot off. I just took a minute to go to the comments. Um, someday I'll have people moderating these once I have a schedule and more resources. And somebody does have a suggestion I will try before we move on back to just some bird listening and stuff. Listen to those birds. Hear that interesting bird or birds? So let's see, the suggestion was sine of x squared times tan of xy times tan of xy. Now, since we already have x and y here, before I even look at the rest of the comment for what they want the right-hand side to be, let's just see what happens if that equals a constant. That's already cool, even if that equals a constant. Oop, we got to at zero. Square thing. We often hit everything being connected when the right-hand side of one of these is zero. And then, so interestingly, we often hit um, Kind of like everything interconnected when, um, or what I was thinking is what's cool is that when then dependent on the left side, when we go slightly off from zero, we often get something almost close to that, but in a different way. Cool. So then we got what they actually recommended the right hand side to be is sine of y squared. 
and someone was doing a clarity about the moving average. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what you mean. You have a number every hour that is the moving average of the last seven days, and you want the raw hourly values. Oh, no, you're not going to be able to get every single raw hourly value if you just have info about averages. Um, I mean, if you have a small enough set of data and certain clues about it, you might. Um, but, yeah, you wouldn't be able to get all of that data, I don't think. Then, um, sine of y squared is what someone suggested being here. Cool. Do, 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 do. And we can probably mutate it by putting an A somewhere. A squared. Okay, so yeah, these are all super cool. I love playing around with these graphs. Um, the bird stopped, but hopefully you guys heard that earlier. Now I'm going to go back to my camera just so we can just move over to a less glary spot. I can actually uh, interact and chat a little bit more and pause on the graphing because like I said, um, if you want a math heavy thing, there will be more math as usual. I like talking about that, but if you want a math heavy thing, then just stay tuned on the main channel for a uh, full episode coming out tomorrow all about math. And um, this stream is more of a New Year's Eve celebration for that and for hitting more and more milestones such as 85,000 subscribers here and other thoughts about New Year's. Um, some of my other goals include what other resolutions do I have apart from well I guess I didn't list any yet. Some resolutions I have are to um, I would like to at some point this year or maybe next year be able to make enough money from videos to switch out of a day job of teaching private lessons. Then I, oh, this is sinking in the mud really bad, this chair. Okay, you guys got to see an example of this. The chair just like sinks in the mud ridiculously. Look at what it's like right now compared to what it should be. Let me see if you can see this. That's how tall it's supposed to be. They sink into the mud ridiculously. Okay, um, the ones with the spiky legs. But I want to, at some point this year or next year, be able to switch into just be able to make videos um, and do writing projects that I'll show you guys and music projects and stuff. That would be awesome. But for now, I still teach a bunch of private lessons, so we'll see. Um, I want to be able to get out into nature more because I wasn't able to do that this last year with all my surgeries. And so to be out in nature, I want to um, uh, go camping again, go on more hikes and stuff now that I'm recovered mostly from the surgeries. Um, I would like to continue socializing more with friends because I was a little more introverted this year than some years. And um, I'd like to get a girlfriend would be cool. I need to make sure to take my physical therapy very seriously for my legs, for my surgeries and such. I would like to not drink alcohol again this year, because I didn't last year and that was good. I would like to try and get better sleep. I would like to, it's a lot of resolutions, it's probably enough. I'd like to maintain my productivity with combo class and hopefully keep escalating up in subscribers. Um, that's probably enough resolutions. So, 
Um, I want to just have a really good grade negative two when that hits. So, um, hopefully some of those resolutions will be manageable. And um, other things that we have planned in the near future will be, um, like I said earlier in the stream, I'll announce sometime later this week my streaming schedule for some days that you can count on seeing it in particular. There might also be themes of those days, so there might be like one time of the week that sometimes is lined up to be my weird graphing stuff day, one day that's lined up to be like nature exploration day or stuff. And um, for people who can't make it, remember, I'll try and make them fun to watch after the fact too, so it's sort of like just a long casual video. It's also live. Right now they're a little rambly and ranty, but they'll become more and more coherent and on schedule over time as I get more people helping me during a live stream, which I usually do entirely myself right now. Um, so it's hard to deal with the technology and the making it engaging the whole time and stuff. So if I have people helping me on the live streams at some point, then I will be able to make it extra engaging. And um, we'll go on more field trips on some of them and fun stuff like that. And um, there might be a few of the days that I do it on Twitch instead of YouTube. For times I want to just be more casual chatting about other websites or content to be able to reference things or make commentary on things without worrying about getting one of my YouTube channels copyright struck. So, um, yeah, to not worry about as much that, I might stream some stuff somewhere else like Twitch or something if I'm just being casual on my computer. But I'll announce those days soon, within a week or so. And, um, there'll be a lot more fun content. I already filmed a bunch of shorts and bonus videos that will be coming out throughout the next week or so, along with the main channel episodes which, like I said, the next one's coming out sometime tomorrow. Uh, probably early tomorrow. Probably be out by this time tomorrow. Um, which, for me, is early. may not be early for some. I mean, it's not early anymore. It's 2 p.m. But it's on the earlier end. Um, kinda, depending what scale. Um, actually, I was up kinda early, even though I was up really late. So, definitely not running on much sleep. But... I'm not going to stream much longer. I think I'm going to switch off pretty soon and work on some other things for the day. Um, but it's been very fun having, whoop, having some of you combo lords join me for a minute. A uh, little extra time to chat and look at graphs and other fun things. And I'll be back again very soon with some shorts and some... Um, random bonus videos and that main channel video tomorrow and for anyone who tunes into the patreon which is linked in the description here there'll be a lot of bonus stuff on there too in the next week or two and um hope everyone's having a really good new year's yourself whenever that occurred for you however many hours ago and it's probably for most of you still the new year's day if you're watching this live if you're watching it later maybe not anymore but still close enough that you can still have time to think about some fun things you want to achieve in the next month or whatever or some things you want to be proud of for the past year or you can ignore it because it's just a random calendar shift um i think it's a fun excuse to have some things like that i mentioned but it's not mandatory by any means um so leave any last thoughts or questions down below i couldn't answer all of them but a lot of them i'd already answered in past streams or just didn't have time to do right now um while i was doing my graphs and such um but in any case super awesome that we got this many combo lords here i love doing this live streaming so stay tuned for that more official schedule soon and I think I'm going to log off now. I think, uh, I hope you all have a super wonderful day. 
think here the rain is going to chill out for today. And then, ooh, was that a squirrel or something? I heard something scamper. I don't know. Um, I think the rain's gonna chill out for today. And then return um, throughout much of the week. So the puddles may return, which could either be considered a large puddle or a miniature lake. So stay tuned for more footage of that. I had the short about it, but more footage will be coming out in some episodes that the rain was happening in the background of. Um, and I will see you all again soon. Um, where did my phone go? Oh, it's back here. Um, I'll see you again soon. Um, someone is wondering how I don't have a girlfriend. Good question, because I'm pretty dope. Well, I had a lot of problems a year or two ago and was a bit of a mess, so maybe I wouldn't have been a good boyfriend a couple years ago. Now I'm a good, uh, more balanced-ish person. And, um... I just have been very introverted the past year and haven't gotten out quite as much. So now that I'm getting out more again, we shall see. Um, but um, I do uh, plan on getting out again more, at the very least, with my squad who I love and I had a great time seeing last night. Um, so maybe you guys will get to meet random elements of my squad over time and some live streams or snack break videos or something. Um, but yeah, I'm going to log off now and work on some stuff. Uh, you guys are super awesome. Love you all. And I will see you again very soon.